I believe that um, I've had an incorrect view of uh, what true efficiency is during my life. Many times I've said, I want to be more efficient. And I've taken different actions and I've taken different decisions trying to be more efficient. But if I view my life, I think that many of those decisions and actions have been really counterproductive. And I can see similar patterns in the world. Companies, organizations, individuals, or even countries. We view efficiency in a way which I believe can be extremely counterproductive. Even if we feel or we believe that we are becoming more efficient, we are in fact decreasing efficiency. And I'll try to uh, explain why. Imagine that uh, this cute little guy was your son. Let's call him Emil. He's 10 years old. He's full of energy. He uh, has a lot of different interests. He's a popular guy. He uh, has different hobbies, and uh, he's the little, little crazy one. He's your son. Then one day, you get the phone call from his teacher saying, we're worried about Emil. We uh, can see that he has severe concentration problems. Um, he cannot really participate in the regular class. He has concentration problems. And uh, we've been discussing this, and we have an hypothesis that he might have ADHD. ADHD, what is that? Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. That means that a person has difficulty to focus. He or she is uh, impulsive and has full of hyper energy. That's ADHD. Can you imagine if you got that message? How would you re react as a parent? Maybe you would agree that, well, let's make an investigation because ADHD is considered to be a handicap. So um, then one can question, what happens when you do an ADHD investigation? Well, there are seven different steps. The first step is that the parents, they meet with the professionals and discuss the situation. After that step, then you have a chat with the child and get his or her perspective. After that, you do a functional um, investigation to see what is working, what is not working. After that, you do a psychological investigation, and then after that, you go to the medical investigation. In the psychological investigation, you see how they react, if they, cannot, if they can concentrate. In the medical investigation, you see how they react on different medicines. Then you can compile all the information from the different tests, and you do a lot of different questionnaires, and then you can settle, he has ADHD or not. So it looks fairly effective. Seven different steps. The problem is, this is not the case in the real world. It doesn't look like this, a fast sequence of seven different steps. Rather, it looks like this. There's some green part where they, in fact, do the investigation, but there's a lot of red part as well where we wait. Because the way we organize orga organizations and companies today is into different islands, different functions, where each function has one certain responsibility. So it's like taking a boat to different islands. Like when you go to Thailand, you travel to all these different islands, and that's exactly how an ADHD investigation looks like. And then one can question, if we're traveling to these seven different islands, how long time does it take? Well, this is a real example from the southern part of Sweden, and it took, in fact, four months. And then one can question, is that efficient? What would you say if it was your kid? Would it be efficient to wait for four months? Well, if we look at this picture, we can compare the green part with the red part, and then maybe we could have a hypothesis. Maybe it's like 20% value-adding time, and the rest, 80%, is, is uh, um, non-value-adding time. But that's not the case. The real case is this. If we, com if we combine all the 17, or the seven steps, we only have 17 hours, and contrast that to four months, that is 2,880 hours. So that means that our level of efficiency is 0.6%. During 99.4%, we are out in the ocean, and no one really cares about us. When we're up on an island, then we get full attention. Full attention of all the doctors, they're fantastic. But when we're in the middle of two different islands, 
no one really takes care of us. The problem, however, is that we cannot get this picture on a regular basis. We don't see the big picture. Rather, our unit of analysis are only these different islands, and we don't really analyze them together. We analyze them separately. This is what it looks like from a company or organization's perspective, but the real problem is if we take a customer or patient or citizen's perspective, this is what it looks like. Okay. Emil might have ADHD, what is happening? Then all of a sudden, well, it's the first step, we have to go there. And you, you, you go there, and then it's the next step, well, it's, it's, it's a chat with the kid, and then it's a functional investigation, and then it's a psychological investigation, and then all of a sudden, well, I mean, the medical investigation is tomorrow, but we don't have time, so we have to reschedule and reschedule, and then the third time, yes, we nailed it, medical investigation, and then we gather all the information, and then all of a sudden we can settle, this is the case. But the problem is, we don't see the big picture. Because we are traveling to different islands, and each island, they have like a tent over it. When you're inside, the, on, on the island, then it's fantastic to be there. And one can question, is this okay? We can recognize this within healthcare, within companies and organizations, even in the integration process of new Swedes. We are developing organizations and companies that are considered to be different islands, and each island has different responsibilities. Some um, years ago, it was a fantastic man. His name is Anders Edberg. He was working with ADHD investigations at Skåne University Hospital, and he said, this is not okay. It's about our children. We have to think in a completely different way. So he gathered all the personnel working on these seven different islands, and he said, we need to develop a new way of working. So the question is said, what is a good ADHD investigation? Everyone had to come up with their perspective, and they said, well, it's about seven steps. Seven different steps, seven different islands. And then he said, but okay, if we have seven different steps, how can we develop a way of working where we work in one team instead of seven different teams? One team where we really take a parent's perspective and a child's perspective so we can deliver a good ADHD investigation. How can we do that? Where we have a common goal, where we first deliver quality, we want to make a good investigation, but we also want to deliver speed. Four months is not okay, we want to do it faster. Then they sat down and talked, what is our best way of working if we are going to work together? Seven different steps, and they could de decrease and decrease and decrease, and over time, everyone could start to see the big picture. Everyone was not only an island, they said, we are one island, or one efficient ocean, with different responsibilities, but we have the same goal. So, with visualization and continuous meeting, they could con control the investigation process. And in fact, they could de decrease throughput time down to three weeks. So four months down to three weeks. And then one can question, how did they do that? Well, it's fairly simple. Three weeks instead of four months. They had numerous positive uh, effects on the organization. First of all, it was faster, but then they recognized it's so much easier to handle this. Why? Because we only have to take care of five children at the same time when it takes three weeks. When it takes four months, we have to handle 35 cases at the same time. Think about if you, are, uh, if you were to answer your emails once a week, how many unanswered emails would you have in your computer? If you were to answer two times a day, you would have much less. Little law. that's mathematical laws which can explain that. So if we go from four months down to three weeks, we go from 35 cases down to five cases. Then it was a very creative secretary said, well, if it's only five kids, let's, let's take a picture of them. We put them up on the wall and put the names on them. And then we meet in front of this wall every day so we can make sure that we control, control the progress. This is what it looked like. This is just a fictive picture but approximately five different kids and a standardized process in three weeks. Three steps first week, three steps second week, and one step the uh, third week. 
And what they did was that they gathered in front of this board, everyone, and they said, have we done step one? Yes. Have we done step two? Yes. Have we done step three? Yes. Good. We are on track after the first week. Have we done step four? Yes. Step five? Yes. Step six? No. We haven't gotten the questionnaire yet. Why? And then they could put in extra resources to handle that case. So, in order to be able to secure that this, in fact, happened, they could control the progress. So they had perfect progress control by seeing the big picture. So there were a lot of positive effects. First of all, it was um, faster. Second of all, they could increase and have stable quality, which in turn delivered a great experience for the parents. Furthermore, this reduced the stress of the personnel, and which in turn made the personnel re really, really proud. But the most interesting part here is that it increased productivity more than 100%. And what I think is interesting here is, how is this possible? We have a win-win-win-win-win-win situation. Everyone is better off. And if we look into microeconomic theory, this is not possible. We talk about trade-offs. I mean, we cannot deliver high quality at the same time as low cost. It's impossible. Uh, so, for instance, if we have a five-star hotel, then we can be good in high quality, but we won't deliver in terms of low cost. Or we have a budget hotel. We are good in low cost, but we won't be delivering high quality. And there's, we can have a five-star, four-star, three-star hotel, just di different type of, of, of customer needs. But this case here, we were beating the trade-off. We were increasing quality at the same time as lowering the cost, increasing productivity. And what I think is really interesting is the question, how? And that's why I want to talk about efficiency. Because if we look into systems today, we define efficiency from a resource perspective. We define efficiency from a functional perspective. It's like we take an organization, here's the customer need, and we cut the need of the customer up, and we say, this is your responsibility, this is your responsibility, and this is your responsibility. And if I were the president, I need KPIs to make sure that everyone delivers, so we measure efficiency on an island level. This is what we call resource efficiency. So one can say that if this was a doctor, how much time available does the doctor have? And how much value can she or she, he deliver during that time? And this is what we call the resource efficiency. We try to measure value from a certain function or a resource. The other type of perspective, that is to put focus on the patient in this case. It's like putting up a film camera. I think if we had a GoPro and we could put it on EML's shoulder and press record once the need was identified until the need was fulfilled, then we would have a 40 or four months long movie. And I would tell you that 40, no, four months long movie, it wouldn't be an action movie. We know that there's only 0.6% that's action. Imagine that you went to a cinema sitting down waiting and it's only one minute out of two hours that is action, you would leave in a couple of minutes. Because here we have competitive pressures. We don't have that, especially not in the public sector. We just have to wait. So when it comes to flow efficiency, then we measure efficiency. How well can we fulfill the need of a customer? Totally different. So we have two forms of efficiencies. Either we drive uh, resource efficiency, making people work more, utilize people's competence, or we drive flow efficiency, meaning that we fulfill the need of our customers. And of course, it's not about either or. We want to reach the star, but the question is, if we want to reach the star, which of these two forms shall we prioritize first? We can compare them with, with each other. We have flow efficiency and resource efficiency. In resource efficiency, we focus on the resources. The bad thing is that we will have long throughput time because all the islands are busy, so there will be queues and waiting times in front of each island. The good thing is that we have high capacity utilization. Flow efficiency, here we have focus on the need. Instead, we focus on how fast can we fulfill the need. But the bad thing is that we have low capacity utilization. Which one of these forms shall we take? Flow efficiency, great from a customer perspective. Resource efficiency, great from an economies of scale perspective. 
But what we in research can see is that we shall always, always, always drive flow efficiency. Why? Well, think about it. What kind of indirect effects will these two forms have on our organization? If we over-focus on resource efficiency, then we will develop efficient islands, where each island do not see the big picture. They only focus on what they are supposed to be doing. And after a while, they develop a subculture. A subculture which, after a while, get a king or a queen saying, this is my island. Don't come here and disturb our way of working. And when we have these kings and queens on the different islands, what happens then? Well, everyone are doing a fantastic job, but if you look from a customer perspective, how much of the total time do we really take care of the customer? Well, we have a king or a queen taking care of the customer during 0.6% of the total time. During 99.4% of the time, in this case, no one takes care about the patient or the customer because they've done their part of the work. So if we drive resource efficiency, we will go to a situation where we have 0% time where we care about the customer, but the indirect effects of flow efficiency is that we go towards full focus on customer satisfaction or customer focus. And that drives effectiveness. We're doing the right thing. Here drives ineffectiveness. We're doing the wrong thing because we're making decisions from an island perspective. So, what happens here? What would you do if it was your son, Emil? Well, you would probably sit there, and after a while, when you feel that you have been waiting enough, you will start to call. That's a new need, because you're upset, and the doctor has to take care of you. And I can promise you, if it was your son, you wouldn't be so nice to the doctors. You say, I've been waiting now for three weeks. What is happening? Then, they have to take care of that. So, that's a new need. So, the organization develops new needs when we don't focus on the flow. And that's what we call the efficiency paradox. When we don't see the big picture, we will become ineffective. We cannot see the big picture, we make incorrect decisions, we develop new needs, and the organization will become an engine of waste and errors. So, if we look at this, what happened really with the ADHD example? Well, it took first four months, then they, took, they could decrease throughput time. What happens with a number of cases from 35 down to 5? Which is the easy, easiest one to handle, 35 balls or 5 balls? It's so much easier to handle, but those are the indirect effects that we do not measure when we measure island efficiency, because that can only be measured on a system level. So, number of cases decreases, number of handover de decreases, number of restarts decreases, complexity decreases, and it's so much easier. And that's the kind of situation we want to be in. Here, we need to take care of things that do not add any value at all, but when we can have overcapacity to always make sure that we have efficient processes, then we deliver true value from a system perspective and from a customer perspective. So, prioritizing flow efficiency drives effectiveness. We do the right thing. So, um, my question to you is, where do you put up your camera? On your employees? Or on your customers? The citizens? Or your patients? Good luck! <laughs>